And I've been in this motherfucker, you know what I'm saying, my whole life. So, you know, I done kind of lived a little bit all over, but I can say my, jam my old roots is all from Seven Mile, so that's where we at right now. And that's why I'm showing, you know, this is our hood right here. This used to be one of the most prominent neighborhoods to grow up in. Back in the 70s, it was all white and black started moving here in the 70s. And now you see it's all black now. I could take you with Blade Icewood. Used to come on the block and we used to all chill at. It's right around the corner. That's the thing about Detroit niggas, they swagged out. So even young niggas be swagged out. But he was a goat with it. He was one of the first niggas early on to get swagged out. The Cheddar Boys was popping. He used to be on the block. Right off of here, it's called Seven Mile in Asbury Park. What's some notable history that was just Seven Mile from y'all side of town? Just like in general, just stuff that the outside world wouldn't fully understand. The west side wasn't black, it was white. Everybody was on the east side that was black. So in the 70s, people, the black started moving on the west side and one of the most popular places they moved to was Seven Mile. That was one of the first areas that we moved to. And so that's what built the culture here as far as fashion, the hustle, all that, because we was there, it was originators on, on the west side. It's from Seven Mile. Coming up right here is about to be Asbury Park at this light. I'm about to take you down and show you the block where everybody used to hang at. When did that trend change from like the OG, just hustlers to the, now that everybody want to be scammers? I would say, I mean, you know, niggas was busting checks in this bitch first. That was the first original scam was busting checks. And that shit started popping off in the early 2000s. So that's when the scam had started. Basically, I would say probably maybe late 90s. I would say late 90s leading up in 2000. Niggas was already scamming here. So they were calling it scamming. Just call it checks, busting checks. Talking about nigga get a check for shit, 10,000, go to Walmart, bust that bitch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> go find a little, little chick don't know shit, drop 20 in her bank account where I draw that shit out. Niggas sitting on 20 of them bitches. Yup, yeah, this is Asbury Park where we are on right now, though. The Cheddar Boys used to hang down this motherfucker. The McNasty Boys used to hang down this motherfucker. Blade Icewood used to hang down here. How big was Blade to the city? Man, he was the first one of my generation, young nigga, that kind of died early that had that swag, and he was about to make it. Actually, this the house right here we used to be on. This house right here. You experienced the uh, the full-fledged effect of when y'all city had went bankrupt? Shit. You talking about the recession that popped off? That uh, we had back yeah. in like 2008? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, if you came here in 2000, you wouldn't even see an abandoned house. All these houses was occupied. The recession popped off. When the gas prices went up. They stopped making cars. Everybody lost their job. What was that atmosphere like? It was fucked up. Everybody was getting the fuck on. That's why Atlanta halfway looked like Detroit. Because everybody from here got the fuck on and went to Atlanta. And all the real ones stayed here and popped it off. Rolled it out. Now we back shining. During that time, how hard was it to get by? I mean, it just depends on what, what your ways was to get money. If you ain't know how to get money, if you know how to get money, you're going to get money no matter what's going on. So I wouldn't say that it was hard for me, but... You know, I'm sure it was hard for other people. And you said you was around when crack had popped off. How hard did it hit y'all? Because I know in Oakland, that's where it all started. And it hit and it like devastated the city. Oh, shit. I had family members on crack. You know what I'm saying? Neighbors on crack. It was bad. You know what I'm saying? That shit was bad. That's part of the reason why the neighborhood looked like it looked now. Niggas stripped these bitches just to take aluminum. To yeah. the damn scrapyard. Get $20 for stripping a whole house. Damn. Two fucking rocks. Mm. Get this street sign right here. This hell. Uh, this this seven mile four life cats over this way. And we all family, so it ain't no gang shit. It's just where you from. And we all love where we from and we always talk that shit. Uh, this the family house right here. Coming up down here, this is where strictly at. So this just go to show you how close I grew up to where the action was at. Like back in the 80s, early 90s. You would go to Seven Mile and it would just be packed full of people driving up and down sweet cars, people walking. Most of the people would just walk and be on Seven Mile just because they want to see all the cars that come up and down. Just fun, something fun to see. Yeah, like this shit started like in the city, like hanging out, showing flashy cars and shit. That shit kind of started on the mile. 
But anywhere you go in the world, though, they know who Detroit is. That's so BMF just dropped. Yeah, that's that's for sure. You know what I'm saying? That all just put the light on us. Did you, you know get a chance saying? to see it? Absolutely. How accurate was that to what was going on that time? Um, it was fairly accurate. You know, fairly accurate. You know, it's fairly accurate. See that city sign? Get that Detroit. Get that strictly. Yeah. Let me take a picture. I want to take a picture. She ain't want to say that because she ain't looking right. So she ain't want to speak. She know I see that little boy. Got yeah, a bitch people ain't got no lashes on. <laughs> they don't be one. They be feeling so self. Whole different identity. Uh huh. Yeah, but they got the whole strip right here. Strictly been here for psh, man, probably about damn near forty years. Everybody famous that came to Detroit that wanted some super designer or something different, they go to Strictly Sports World. You go inside there, they got pictures of all type of famous people. Hey, this is an iconic part of Seven Mile right here, like from from like Evergreen all the way down here to like Lasher, Hubble. This is the cold car wash right here. My man's on that. Now, this is a legendary street right here, Pre Palace. Now, but right here is the old hip hop shop where you hear Eminem and D12 and all the rap niggas from back in the day. Right here with his two, uh, tattoo gallery at now. How do people feel about Eminem in this city? Cause I feel like people forget that he from Detroit at times. Well, you know, he part of the older generation, so the young cats, they don't really remember him like that. So, you know, if you don't know nothing, you ain't gonna respect it. But, you know, he a legend. He the one that, he really popped it off for the city, even though people, the young folks might not understand that, but he did. And that nigga really from the city. He ain't no nigga from the suburbs, he from the city. This is a motherfucking, this is what we call our Coney Island. See, this spot right here is Nikki D's Coney Island. You go there, man, you got about a hundred things on the menu. It ain't like a Waffle House, they only offer you seven things. Coney Islands, about 50 things, man. You make stir fry, fried chicken, hmm. waffles, omelets, anytime. Pancakes, club sandwich, corned beef, fried fish sandwich, any time of the day. They open 24 hours a day. This is another legendary spot right here. It's Party Expo. This store right here, been around for forever. If you know what it is, you know what it is. How do you think, how did uh, Detroit get so tapped in like with the Bay Area? Cause they said we like we locked in type shit. Oh yeah, well you know, players recognize players. And Oakland is the king of the players. And Detroit, we the king of the players too. And you know niggas got that under, underground movement going. You know out there in the West Coast, there's a lot of shit going on that we didn't have going on here at one point in time. Cause y'all got that beautiful sun that shines all day, every day. So that makes things grow. And when things grow, sometimes they can be profitable. So that's what brought us right there. It was a nice trail that niggas used to be using to get down there and fuck around with them Oakland cats. Got a homeboy that's from Oakland. His ass stay here. He just got that way about him. He a Mac on the hoes. The hoes just gravitate to a nigga. He just got that swag about him. I think niggas just know how to talk and just know how to lean and know how to motherfucking put them clothes on. You know what I'm saying? You just gotta know, some niggas just know how to mac to a bitch and some niggas don't. So depending on where you grow up at, I think that shit just in the water. So Oakland, one of them places where it's in the water like it is here. You could at one time, here go, junkie outside your window, gang. Okay? Oh, we ain't got nothing, mama. We ain't got shit. It's all up. It's all in the air. We ain't got nothing cash. Yo, good Sorry. day. You big ISP? Yeah. ISP said my phone like. You said you're gonna be out here a couple months. <laughs> you can you spy fake buffs and real buffs when you see them? Uh, not really. You know what I'm saying? Not really, because the game they got so watered down, you can't even really tell. But How much you gotta pay for a pair of glasses like them? Oh shit, these bitches right here, these special. These are a little bit a little higher. These like 3500 But you use them to get you some white sticks for about, probably a little over two racks. But you can get them on the street, you know what I'm saying, which other way, but most niggas like to go to Hutch's. And How big is Snatching Buffs out here? It used to be kind of big, but now everybody and their mama got a pair, so niggas don't even snatch them no more. When I was coming up, niggas was dying over these bitches. But now everybody got a pair, so it ain't like it used to be. Now niggas still get you together if you get caught slipping. But, mm -hmm. you know, for the most part, everybody got a pair of these motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. Man, my childhood, you know, I came up in the era where crack hit the hood. So, shit, a lot of our parents, a lot of our fucking, oh, they got police right there. There they go. They stay around in the hood, too. 
out than them jump out boys right there. I will say, our police here ain't like police everywhere else. I ain't gonna, you know, fuck the police, but the police here, they ain't like other places. They ain't shooting and killing us and choking us and harassing the fuck out of us. They don't do that shit here. If you ain't out really doing no extra hot shit, they ain't really fucking with you. We just went past that, but we actually blew through a stop sign. Mm. But the stop sign ain't there because every time they put a stop sign up, somebody in one of them scat packs come and knock the bitch down. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we didn't have no stop sign on our side, but I know the hood. I know it's supposed to be a stop sign. But you see they trip. You somewhere else, they been hitting you, turn on you and all that. Here, they don't give a fuck about that shit. All they care if you got some guns on you. That's all they care here. It's them niggas to keep you dope. We legal, so that ain't no problem no more. Got gun laws and shit pretty, pretty, pretty bad out here. Well, shit, we got CPL, so you you can get license to carry, but you know you get caught with the strap here, depending on what your record look like, depending on how much time you get.